Brianna Ray from BriIY, and I am here to tell you that I had zero intention of filming today, but my mom asked me to do a project for her, and I thought no real reason why I can't film it, and kind of kill two birds with one stone. As you can see from over my head here, it is the holiday season. I guarantee that this video is not going to be out until like June. So. This is a pretty old video if you're seeing it uh, around the time I'm expecting you to see it. Um, but this is a Christmas present and Christmas is about two days away. So I kind of have to rush this one. Uh, you know, with the pandemic situation happening, unfortunately, I had to kind of wait a long time to receive the items that I needed to start this project. And now I'm rushing it. So why not make it just that much more difficult and film a little bit of it too? So. You can kind of see I have a bunch of stuff going on behind me, ignore my messy side table. I actually had to move my entire couch out of the way for this because my mother has asked me to make a duvet cover for my cousin. So what I'm going to be doing is essentially taking a tapestry that he decided that he liked and sewing it together with some king size sheets to create a full duvet cover. So you can kind of see a little bit of what it's like back there. He's very into the psychedelic kind of stuff. So he picked out this tapestry and it's just too small to fit on the comforter that my mom picked out so I had to sew a border around it but I didn't want it to be super complicated. Long story short, what I've done here is I've kind of set up uh, a king size sheet. I got a king size sheet for this and I'm going to center the tapestry on it before I actually go on to creating the duvet cover. So this I think is going to be the most time consuming part. The plan is that I'm going to measure it out, start pinning it down and get it sewed down. The lucky thing is because the tapestry is ready to hang, everything is already hemmed, um, which is really nice on all the edges. So really all I have to do is top stitch it down in the middle and hope that my cat does not destroy it. Isn't that right, honey? So that's what we're gonna start with. I'm gonna start by pinning everything around, doing some measurements, and then I'll take it to the sewing machine to stitch up. So let's get started. So let's talk math. The math of this is that the king size sheet is gonna be 108 by 102 inches. I'm sorry if I don't know the centimeters for that. Um, I can pop it up right here. Um, and the tapestry is 66 by 79 and it's long ways. So I know that long ways my sheet is 108 and long ways my tapestry is 79. So 108 minus 79 is 29, I think, and half of that is 14.5. So I'm going to need to set it so that I have 14.5 inches on this side and this side. I think this side is a little bit more than this side right now, so I know I'm going to have to move it over a touch. But uh, I'm going to start there and then I'm going to worry about centering it up ways and down ways. So let's get pinning there first. Well that took me a half hour just to pin this. <laughs> Um, I knew this was gonna take a hot minute. Um, I think it's pretty much as flat and as centered as I'm gonna get it. Um, I don't I don't have the space to be doing a project this big and it's kind of stressing me out. But um, now that I've got everything pinned around all the edges and my cats have not torn any holes in it, uh, though there were some times I wasn't certain that they wouldn't, uh, I'm gonna take this upstairs and sew all the way around the edges, just a simple straight top stitch. Nothing fancy because the edges are already down and that's all I need. And I'm gonna do that in white so that it blends in. And that's that, so I will be back when that is done. Okay, it's attached now, which means I can move on to actually making it into a cover. Which means, now that I have my king size sheet and my tapestry sewn to it, I need to get a second king size sheet, which I'm going to place wrong sides together, and I'm going to sew around three sides and leave one open so that I can add a zipper so the comforter can fit inside. So let's get to laying out the second sheet. So I needed to take eight inches off the top and bottom on either side because um, it's eight inches too long and the sides left and right were six inches too long so I divided that in half so I, I'm taking three inches off the sides, both sides, and four inches off the top and bottom so that they will be even. I'm going to pin all the way across three inches this way. Uh, three inches in on this side and four inches in on this side and I'm gonna call that my seam allowance 
and then I, when I finish that, I will be able to take it up and sew down the three sides before adding in the zipper. After my son uh, so graciously decided to unpin things behind me as I was pinning them together, um, I finally got everything done, um, and it's about it's straight and even as I can get it. Um, the bottom edge is 94 inches, and we only have a 60 inch zipper, so I did kind of plan to sew it in a little bit. I'm feeling pretty good about it, and I feel even better knowing that I'm almost done. <laughs> um, not almost done, but like step-wise I'm getting close to the end. Um, the pinning seems to be the most frustrating part, so I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna sew this like half section here, the three edges, and I will come back and I will show you how I'm doing the zipper. Alright, everything is sewn together except for the zipper. Of course, I'm going to show you in depth how I'm going to do that. Um, so I do have my hole at the bottom and I am prepared to flip everything inside out, which is what I'm going to do now. It's actually quite nice. I'm liking it. So I'm going to finish turning this inside out and then we'll do Zipper talk. Okay, so zipper time. I have the zipper set up starting at the very edge here. And I just slightly made it too big, so I'm gonna have to stitch up the ending a little bit too. But basically, all I did was open the zipper and then pin it every so often all the way down so that the teeth are just on the outside. And I've seen this done a couple ways where, like, you know, you sew it on the back first and then flip. Um, I didn't think that was necessary. I think this is absolutely fine. Um, and it's taking a lot <laughs> in me to not uh, fabric glue it <laughs> because I'm so tired of <laughs> this project. It's just so huge and I'm so tired and it's been hours already. Um, it's so easy, but it just takes a lot of time and obviously a lot of energy and, and thinking, but I think I'm actually really excited with the way that it's going. Um, I don't have enough room in the uh, aisle upstairs uh, the whole way, I guess. So I am going to put a zipper foot on my sewing machine and I'm going to sew up and down both of these sides and fix up this just slightly too big, like three inch hole I have over here. And we should have a finished duvet. I did it, it's done, it zips. It zips from both directions too, it's a really weird zipper. But, you can zip that way, you can zip this way, you can zip all over, and it's like fully closed, of course. You know, it doesn't open, which is awesome. And then this way it does open, and you can put your duvet inside. Before I get the couch back, I figured I'd take a final product image. Not too bad. Really, really colorful, really, really busy, but hey, I'm not here to judge what folks like. Mom told me I'd never be able to find the head and it was too difficult for her to see, but <laughs> I found it. I think it looks good. You know, you got the zipper down there, which you really can't see, but I guess you can see right there. But. I did it. I made the duvet cover. So, <laughs> just to address something, like in general, I get way, way frustrated when I do really big projects, which is why I don't do a whole lot of them on this channel. Um, it's just something that like I don't have the space for. I live in a tiny apartment, um, I mean relatively tiny, with uh, my fiance. We live together with two cats and I have a lot of crafting things and I try my best to like keep it as organized and as put together as possible, but like when I have really big projects like this or things that take several hours, I tend to get really frustrated. And then <laughs> right at the end when everything works out, because it always does end up working out somehow, um, I'm really happy and I'm really proud of myself and I guess that's kind of why I keep doing things to, like this to myself where I'm stressing myself out or you know trying to take on something that I think seems out of my skill set or a little too difficult because you know by the end of it it always works out and yeah I think this is really cool this is a really interesting DIY that I never thought I would be doing on this channel but hopefully you learned something from it and you feel a little less intimidated to try something yourself so with all that said I wanted to thank you so so much for watching and if you like what you saw don't forget to like and subscribe I put out new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time and I would love for you to be here for the next one thanks again so so much and I will see you then bye